What's up, y'all? Jared Sandler here for our pregame news and notes update. The Rangers and Yankees beginning a four-game series. Uh, let's get some just uh, housekeeping things out of the way. Uh, Kohei Arihara threw a bullpen about 20 minutes ago as I record this, around 4.40 in the afternoon. So we'll get more of an update on what the status is for him moving forward. Uh, Brock Holt is going to participate in a rehab assignment with Double A Frisco for a couple of days. Then the expectation is he'll be activated. So uh, a few things there. And then Jack Kruger, who the Rangers acquired and then DFA'd, has cleared, uh, he, he, he cleared waivers and they've assigned him outright uh, to Triple uh, A Round Rock. So if you're uh, uh, on the Jack Kruger beat, that's your update on Jack Kruger. All right. So the Yankees are in town. And Garrett Cole's pitching tonight. And, and I'll be honest, just from like a baseball fan standpoint, I think for me, Garrett Cole is, is my uh, favorite pitcher to watch. You know, Jacob DeGrom and Garrett Cole, you can debate who's better. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying here. Uh, I just, I love watching Garrett Cole pitch. I've had the pleasure of interviewing him on the pregame show a couple of times and then chatting with him thereafter and just hearing him talk things out and he's so interesting and so bright. I, I do love him and uh, I love watching him. I'm not rooting for him tonight, obviously, but uh, I mean, this guy's been unbelievable. He's, he's striking out more than 40%. He's walking around one and a half percent. That would be the second best walk rate in major league history. And his strikeout rate would be the third best strikeout rate in major league history. I mean, he's been unbelievable. He's got seven straight starts of at least six innings and three or fewer runs. Uh, since he joined the Astros in 2018, he ranks first in the majors and wins second in innings, first in strikeouts, third in ERA, second in batting average, uh, first in strikeouts per nine, uh, first in 10 plus ga- or 10 plus strikeout games. I mean, the guy's unbelievable. What's so cool is that he keeps getting better and how, how he's gotten better this year is by reintroducing the changeup. So, uh, his changeup usage to left-handed batters this year has been over 20%. It's the, the, the pitch he uses most often to lefties other than the fastball. And it's the first time in a while that that's been the case. It has been the curveball. Uh, and, you know, as a matter of fact, he hasn't thrown the changeup as much if you combine the percentage usage over the last two years as he has in this year. It is a noticeable change. Why? Because lefties had their best year against Garrett Cole last year than, than any year since the start of 2018, when he really took the next, not just one step, but next few steps. So he adjusted. He's now throwing the changeup more and the changeup, you know, whether it's directly because of the changeup or just in general, the holistic nature of what he does, but lefties have been really bad against him. They're hitting 071, they're slugging 107, they're Wobas 077, and they're hitting the ball less than 80 miles an hour on average off the bat. I mean, these numbers are ridiculous. And the one noticeable change from a, 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 metric standpoint is the the change of usage so that's something that will be interesting to see how does he utilize the change up against rangers hitters here tonight uh all right from a rangers standpoint uh the rangers have, have gotten to a point where uh we now expect them to not walk people well the walks have been back but i'm curious as to whether or not that's a houston astros thing because the astros are so good at, at making contact and two strikes and fouling off pitches and uh, they, they maybe bring that out in you, uh, or was April a mirage? You know, I, I think, uh, April is a tremendous walk month for the Rangers pitchers. Uh, is that going to be more the norm or is what we saw from the Astros, a cracking of the, the surface? Uh, so it's just something to, to, to monitor, something to follow. Uh, and with, uh, with Jordan Lyles on the mound tonight, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see, uh, one thing with the Rangers, from a pitching standpoint, I think it's worth noting. Joely Rodriguez has been great. You know, he, he gave up uh, runs in his first outing and his 12th outing, his most recent outing. He had gone 10 straight outings without giving up a run. So he's been really good. And maybe they use him no matter what, but one area in which the Rangers are lacking is, is depth from a right-handed reliever standpoint. Someone you'd feel comfortable using in the eighth inning. You can't just throw Josh Spores out there every single game. Indian Kennedy's your closer. So I wonder, you know, what, what sort of adjustments might be made as the year progresses, uh, or if Joel Rodriguez is going to be the guy that you have get out three really tough right-handed batters 
uh, and not just righties, but righties who hit lefties well. The Astros as a team hit lefties well, and those three guys he had to deal with to start the inning hit lefties well. Obviously ended up facing seven batters, but uh, that's going to be something interesting, just an observation from yesterday. And then Isaiah kinder I mean, this guy continues to improve. Uh, and I, I think it's worth noting this. I've been pretty outspoken in saying, I think Izzy uh, is, is ultimately going to have a year that, is not going to be let – me, let me reward this. I don't think Izzy's going to have a year good enough to deter the Rangers from pursuing one of these shortstops, whether they get him or not. He might have a year that leads you to say, well, if we, we want one of these guys, but if we don't get him, we got Izzy. Uh, you know, who knows what his numbers are going to look like in three months. But he is definitely making significant improvements and things that are tangible that you can see uh, that leads you to believe that there is – an improvement overall at the plate. How big of an improvement and what will the numbers suggest? We'll wait and find out. But he does look like a different hitter. His ability to hit with two strikes, I think, is key. The Rangers just faced an Astros team that is so good with two strikes, and that's what makes them so tough. You know, the talent is there, but that is what allows them to get to another level. And that's something that I think every team would like to achieve. But Izzy's the guy that kind of represents that for the Rangers. He also, from a culture standpoint, I think represents everything they want uh, in their guys. And so with that said, I don't think you need to build your lineup around Izzy, but I think he's a guy you want to build a clubhouse around. And, and in order for that to really have any value, he's got to be a, a player, right? You know, you can pick any guy off the street and, you know, maybe he's the guy you want to build your clubhouse around, but he's, you know, going to hit 050 and, you know, that doesn't mean anything. The fact that Izzy is playing like an everyday player is so valuable beyond the fact that he's giving you that type of production because that more enables you to uh, take this guy who from a culture standpoint is exactly what you want uh, and, and build around him. Uh, one last thing here, David Dahl got off to a really rough start, hit below 200 in April. Here in the month of May, he's sitting right around 280 with an OPS of around 830. Uh, already two home runs in May had just two in April. And remember, you gotta, you gotta recalibrate here. The major league OPS average is not 750 like it was a few years ago or, or 730 or whatever. The major league OPS average here in 2021, 705. So a guy with an 826 OPS, uh, that that's significant. Uh, you know, so again, it's just over the month of May, but just to put it in perspective, uh, he is really turning things around. It will be interesting to see whether he can keep this up and he can, show even 85% of the all-star version that the Rockies were able to enjoy in 2019. There you go. That's our, our pregame news and notes updates. Talk to y'all later.